Imagine a situation comedy set in the year 1485. It all started out that way seven years ago for Black Adder. Now, Black Adder, I've had described to me as a wicked, witty, and rude character that stars in a British TV show. Uh, Black Adder is actually shown in the States as well. We've seen him several different times, and the star of that show is actor and comedian Rowan Atkinson, who is here with me this morning. I think you've had probably a lot of fun with this show. Mm -hmm. For those who haven't had a chance to see it, we'll show them right now a scene from the show. I think this is actually Black Adder's wedding day. Take a look at this. Look, I'm waiting for my father-in-law. Last thing I want is some scruffy old beggar blocking the corridor and spinning of cabbage. I am your father-in-law. Oh, no. All right, how much do you want to clear off? Edmund, how could you? He's my father, my only living relative. Ten pounds should do the trick. Father! All right, there we go. Edmund, you mustn't. Oh, don't worry. I'll get Baldrick to beat him up after the ceremony. We'll get the money back. Here we go. I saw this show described somewhere as a situation tragedy. <laughs> I love the expression. Mm -hmm. Would you want to explain that? Well, I don't know. It's just because it's because it's so unlike most situation comedies. I mean, the idea of it is it's supposed to be funny, obviously, but, but at the same time, it's historical, and, and the original inspiration for the first series was Shakespeare. Although, since then, every, we've done four series, and every series is set in a different century. So we started off in Shakespearean times, kind of 1500s-ish, but, but... Could it come in, all the way forward? In yeah, no, in the last series that we did at the end of last year, which I don't think has been shown in the States yet, but it will be soon, was set in the First World War in 1916. So eventually, Blackadder will get up to the 1990s. Yeah, then. absolutely. Yeah, the idea is that everyone dies at the end of every series, and then you start again with their descendants a hundred years later. Which is me. kind of the way it is here yeah, in your exactly. country. Yeah, exactly. However, I've been told that it has an American influence. Yeah, I mean, I think it is, it's, it's bound to appeal, I feel, to Americans more than most British situation comedies, certainly, because the hero is quite cool, because generally English um, comic characters are quite downtrodden and rather stupid yeah, kind of losers, and, and so look silly and, and are losers <laughs> whereas you know you would never describe eddie murphy or, or steve martin necessarily as you know unattractive or downtrodden they tend to be rather cool guys yeah we are our, our much, heroes has to be a yeah, hero your comic heroes are cool whereas our comic heroes tend to be very uncool whereas the whereas the black adder uh the part that i play that uh, that he is he is cool he's a cool guy <laughs> Now, you also did another show for British television over here called Not the Nine O'Clock News. That's right. Now, we have a show in our country, as you well oh, know, called Not Necessarily the News, yeah. which um, is really based on your show. Is that yeah. flattering to be emulated, or do you feel they whipped you off? Uh, well, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a fine both. line. It's a fine line between, <laughs> between uh, being flattered and, yeah. uh, and regretting that, um, because I have a feeling that, that on occasion, consciously or no, they have... Uh, taken ideas of ours and <laughs> adapted them to the yes. American market. But that's fair enough because there's no um, copyright on comedy. So I, I, I think it's unreasonable to think that your comic ideas should be your, your very own. No, I think, I think it's flattering. And, and what I'm pleased about is that it's still running. Is, is Absolutely. That it's, still good. it's very popular. It's still there. Yeah. Did I read that you're doing a pilot, Bean, Mr. Bean? Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Yeah, but it, and did I read that it's a silent character? It is. It's Mr. a Bean? verb. Yeah, it's, it's virtually wordless. Yes. In fact, I've just come back from Montreux in Switzerland this morning because it was entered for an international television festival called the Golden Rose of Montreux. Uh, and we won't know the results till perhaps five this afternoon. But, but, but we were told that we were in the we, we were in the running for, for the winners, but we'll have to see. That sounds like a terribly difficult project to do, though, to do something like well, that it and is. have it still it's be actually interesting. Based, absolutely. It was based on, on some uh, one-man stage routines of mine that I've been doing for about ten years. And although a lot of the one-man show that I do is very verbal, uh, quite a lot of it is very visual. Uh, and I felt that it was time to try and capture that on, um, on film. And it's quite a tradition because the Marx Brothers used to, most of their films were, were, yeah. were based on stage but it would be hard to do did. that in, in America today on television, perhaps. Well, it would be, but then, well, you've got to see Mr. Bean, because I, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to do visual comedy that only appealed to a minority. I mean, I think it is genuinely accessible and fun, and the laughs come at a So constant, maybe we'll right? eventually see so that in the US as well. So maybe you'll eventually see it. Yeah, we're, we're talking about it to some American Well, the people. Black Adder is terribly so, funny, terribly well, funny. thank you very much indeed. <laughs> You're very kind. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more from London and Belfast when we continue. Stay with us. Thank you.